Today we're going to look at an everyday item that can sell for some insane amounts of money if you find the right one. Hey, it's Don. Today we're going to look at something that can sell for a ton of money, whether it's vintage or there are some new ones that will sell as well. We're looking at vintage padlocks that can go for some insane amounts of money. So just like any other category, locks are the same thing. There's only a certain percentage of them that you find that will be worth some big money. But when you find the right one, it can be worth some insane amounts of money. Here is a very early, very unusual one, probably from the 19th century, $2,158. Now this is fancy, it's cast iron, something that wasn't really made out of brass or something that wouldn't have lasted very long. Excellent design on this one. Now this next one here is from the Cambria Iron Company. This is something they would have used at one of their facilities, their production line or somewhere along there, $1,025. These are fairly rare because it's for a specific place, but there's tons of different ones of these. Most big companies had locks with their names on it, so no one would steal the lock as well. Now designs and shapes and styles can really set the price on these two. This one went for $895, very unique a different style of key than most people would be used to seeing. This is a Cotterell in Company Brass Padlock. Now here's a unique one that's tied to many other types of collectibles. This is Adams Express Company. Now you can find stamps from this company. You can find letters, photos, uniforms, buttons, belts, buckles, postal covers, trade cards, all of that sort of thing can be marked from the same Adams Express Company. Excellent type of item here, $595. The best items to sell are ones that have cross category interest and this would be one of them. Now here's a rather worn one. This one's damaged. It has some breakage actually at the bottom of it. There is a flap. The lock cover is missing, broken off. And this still went for $586 with 27 bids. It's for the DRNG railroad line. So very scarce railroad line. Keep in mind that some of the locks that you find that are for modern day railroads and things along that line can be illegal to sell. Many of the government ones that were supplied by the government may be banned and not able to be sold. Now here's a New York and Midland Railroad lock here. This is a defunct one, $564. These are the sorts that you can get a ton of money for. Now, age isn't always a factor. This is from the 1700s. This is a colonial era lock. Kind of looks like Mickey Mouse, I always thought on this one. There are many styles like this in various different sizes. You can see the massive size of the key on here. It only went for $312. It just looks like a rusty hunk of metal to a lot of people. Now, this one's from Winchester Firearms. Advertising pieces do extremely well. $425. Excellent. With the key, they always will sell better. Now, here's another interesting piece. This is property of U of MD, University of Maryland, $910. This goes way back on this one here. Very nice piece. These are the sorts of things you just don't find every day. But if you're not looking, it just looks like any other padlock, especially if it's dark, dirty, dingy, and hasn't been cleaned. Here's a Susque Centennial one. This is a commemorative one. Now, these are called storybook padlocks. They have a specific story or usefulness for them. This is something interesting here. Very nice one here, $435. Here's another interesting one that would fall into the storybook category somewhat as well as advertising and government-wise. This is from a dam project here. Very unique. They were made specifically just for this aspect of the Roosevelt New Deal. So $437. Now here's a souvenir one. This one goes right along the lines with some of the storybook ones you'll find. Dan Patch, Undefeated Pacer Horse. Just like any other thing back in the day, they made advertising pieces of any type you could imagine. Locks were something you could buy and use, and you would remember that name every time you touched the lock. So this is like an advertising, a promotional sporting item from back in the day. $255. 
Now here's one from the St. Louis World's Fair, 1903-1904. Excellent item, storybook to some extent, as well as advertising, promotional, and the whole works. Multi-category interest on this one here. Again, you can find these out in the wild, but they'll be totally black. Most people look at them like that, don't think they carry much value. I've seen tons of great ones that were dirty as can be and were sold for almost nothing because the person who had them hadn't a clue they were worth anything. Now here's an excellent storybook one with an American Eagle with the shield and the whole works on it. Colonial style, $565. Fabulous piece here. Here's another example of a storybook with another Eagle, but this is a much smaller version of that same lock, $338. Here's a rather interesting one. This is a black cat. His face is right on the front. His mouth is where the keyhole is. So very interesting one here. Very unique. I have not seen one like this before. $720 for this cat. This has a Halloween tie-in as well. There's a ton of collectors for cats. Multi-category interest for sure. Now here's an interesting one from the mid-1800s. This is a trick padlock. It's a puzzle. You had to figure out how to open it, how to use it. Very unique item. I have not seen one quite like this, but I have seen a few puzzle ones. They usually sell for some insane amounts of money. This one went for $1,300. Very, very, very unique. Most of these sorts were probably made one at a time. There's also novelty locks that work as well. This one's sterling, and it's hallmarked with touch marks on it as well. Excellent example. It works. It's an actual lock as well. This would have been for someone's diary or little box or something along that line. Now, another interesting aspect of some of the earlier locks, and this one's from 1907, are the keyless locks. You'd have to punch numbers and such forth. This would have been an early combination lock to some extent, $325. Now, I've seen these that were just pitch black, dirty as can be. No one knew what they were. They didn't find a keyhole, so they didn't assume it was a lock. So many times you may be able to get one of these cheaper just because the people aren't aware of what it is. Now, combination locks themselves go way back. You would be surprised how old some of these are. This one's from the 1800s. It's an excellent example of a brass bronze combination lock just a prime key like this now this one went for 197 dollars these aren't well collected everybody was accustomed to the lock style padlocks just another example here 117 dollars same basic one just like we just saw no key or anything needed just like any of the keyless ones now here is one called no key and this is more of a modern day early 1900s 289 dollars more of a brand name back in the day now, another aspect are the keys that go along with this. These three keys went for $465. It's because of the actual railroad line that they go to. Again, keys can be banned as well if they are from modern day ones that could still be usable. They don't want just anybody being able to get a key and a lock to a railroad that's still on the line and still running. Same for the government, police departments, and such forth. But you get the right ones, you can still sell them for some excellent money just like these. These are small small solid brass items. Now there's tons of new ones as well. One of the primo versions here are the Sergeant Greenleaf. These are high security ones. Many of these were made for the US government, so you do have to watch out on which models, which types you are selling. But almost any one of these will go for some insane amounts of money. $500 on this one here. And the last example isn't technically a lock. This is a cutaway to show you how a lock works. And this, again, is the Sergeant's green leaf here. Excellent example, $511. This one goes for more than a usable lock because this is even scarcer than the lock itself. Excellent example of this type of thing. But that's what I have for you today. Well, there we are. Hopefully that gave you some ideas and some thoughts. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified if I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell all your friends.
Saturday, the fun starts when Nancy meets Francie, Sunshine's mom. Actually, we live a very quiet life here. Oh, I want you. And what do you call this? Bad timing. Then there's a fire at the fishes. Yeah, the house two doors down, it's on fire. Could Victor be a fire bug? These children are under my supervision. Go fish! And Starsky and Hutch are set up by the mob. Right after Blansky's Beauties and Fish.